you join back and know it's the wrong way. Swallow, thank you guys so much for, for being here and taking part in this. We are obviously super excited to have you here. If you guys just go around and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Leo. I'm the founder of the band. Hi, I'm Eric and I play bass. I'm Hannah. I love your teacher. Uh, but I do a bit of singing and a bit of jumping around. I'm Rabia and I play lead guitar. My name is uh, Truls and I play drums, as you can see. Let's start at the beginning, as they say. Um, and I guess one of the main questions is, what made you want to start producing music for like YouTube in the first place? Yeah, for me it was uh, pretty random. Like I always played music since I was fourteen. I always liked to record at home and shoot crazy videos. If it was with like my old bands with him, we were just filming stuff, doing crazy backstage stuff around uh, Norway usually. And then YouTube came, and I started using it as uh, like a promotional tool for for the studio I had and like promoting myself locally in the area for like yeah, acoustic gigs that I did and then randomly I just did like a metal cover of a, a Poker Face by Lady Gaga and that got like a million views online and that's when I sat down and really thought Hmm, I like to do this and uh, I can do it at a high pace so I just started doing it every week and uh, yeah I just built from there just asking actually where you got the inspiration for the name frog Leap. Uh that was actually when I built the first studio in uh, Oltedal like a village uh, outside uh, uh, Stavanger a big town in Norway uh, when I built it there was a lot of frogs there <laughs> so it's, cool. it's easier and then like the thought was like you can uh, come come to my studio and you can do like a frog leap to the next level nice that's a good tagline i like that <laughs> the correct way to say it is leapfrog so when you put it like frog leap then search wise online it's really good it's the studio and i think it's a uh, uh, red wine in california that's like the only two things that comes up so perfect for like seo and yeah that's so. like okay cool we should try that one. Yeah, yeah we should. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. you should reach out to them. So set up, set up like a, a sponsorship. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the logo is kind of similar, also. It yeah. had like a jumping frog yeah. on it. So. You realized that you could start producing these videos really quickly, so you started doing it like on on almost a weekly basis. How do you manage getting that much work out that quickly? I think my strength is creativity. I don't second guess myself too much, and I have a lot of experience in in doing it by myself. The creative part of it is the easy part. I record like 60 tracks of stuff. Yeah. So it's generally just uh, the sheer amount of time spent recording six guitars layers on it. I, I Yeah, I guess I, w I wouldn't be able to do it if, if that was like a main concern. <laughs> so I guess it's just making sure you have that foundational skill set like really covered so that you can then dedicate more energy to managing the content, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of releasing music on YouTube, would you say you have like a different promotional approach to releasing it on that platform versus, say, if you're releasing maybe like original music or something like that? To doing covers, you have to have like a license uh, thing to be able to sell it and stuff. When I started, there's a site called like Sounddrop.com, where I basically just upload my song every week and and they get all the licensing from the record company and original writers get like a, a small percentage of the sale. And they also like distribute it, so that part is is pretty easy. But coming from a band background, I wasn't really like in the earlier days like business orientated, so I didn't know like we had maybe a small record label and stuff. I, I don't know what <laughs> what they were doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like now I'm controlling yeah. everything myself, yeah. and it's pretty easy like doing what I said, or also having a YouTube network um, company that helps me with any questions I have but it is pretty easy to to navigate it it, do, it doesn't take a lot and I, I don't like it like I said I, I consider myself like a creative person I don't want the business side of it <laughs> I just want to have fun and play music sure I guess some of the takeaways from that are you know in, in a way like how important it is to keep as much as you can in-house so that you have as much like control over it as well and then only kind of like delegating when you really get like out of your depth you know if it's like copyright law 
as a career, you know, you're probably going to be like, cool, I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to get someone else I to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like being a creative person, I think we all experience this. Like, the more you can do yourself, there's a lot of people who doesn't do what they're going to say they're going to do. So, you definitely, the more you can do yourself and have control over it and just find your path of doing things, it's basically about that. Like, it's all up to you and how you approach and uh, how consistent you are with this or that. It's, it all comes down to you. You can't like uh, rely on anyone to, to help you. I remember like record labels coming to me and they want to sign me and like had that been 10 years ago, that would be like, wow, that, this is the most amazing thing ever. But now it's that I don't need that. They come to me because they want to earn money. So it's like the whole uh, way of thinking about it is, is kind of different now than it was before. When you're working in a creative field, it's very easy to like get bogged down in the perfectionism of, of things. Would you say, especially like at the beginning, you were more focused on like just actually getting your content out there regularly versus like you know really really worrying about oh my god have I got every single little bit nailed? Or is it is it perhaps in fact that you said like recording it came so easily to you that you kind of didn't need to worry about that? You definitely want to be very detailed, but that then also I have like a deadline, so I know that I'm going to be finished by this day. So if that takes me three hours or 12, that's like the question, but I'm going to get done. And that's, that's also the cool thing by having that type of deadline, because a lot of musicians tend to just uh, work on something and then they don't have a deadline and then that means that you'll just keep it and you'll second guess it too long. But for me, I'm trying to perfect it, but then I'm finished. I did the best that I could at that time and then I can finish it and then look back at it. So, And I, I think that's a, a good way to learn. I, I tend to finish things and move on. I think that's uh, very important. Yeah, I think I think having having like a tangible end goal is is, yeah. is like one of the most important things in actually getting getting the work done. Essentially, mm. you're obviously uh, like very collaborative in in your work. In that you have all these other amazing musicians here who work with you. Do you have like a particular approach to who you would collaborate with, and and then like how do you approach them? Is it all like kind of like happy accidents, or do, or do you like seek people out, or uh, usually seek people out that are friends or like me and Ruby also it's like we met because of music and and YouTube but then became friends I could definitely be more what's the word like cynical about it or like yeah I don't want to do this because I want to make viral videos but my thought has never been about uh, getting viral videos I just want to have fun and uh, yeah. I want to play with people who I like and who can do something that I can't do Picking people that have like specialist skills that are going to add to your to your project. Yeah. Sure. Uh, how do you manage like your in ear setups when you're working live or or in the studio, in fact? Uh, yeah, Rubia. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, it's the X32 by Behringer, which is like a rack mixer thing. Yeah. You go from that into like some Shaw wireless mm -hmm. stuff, you know, like uh, transmitters and, and then receivers, but. The sound engineer will have a set of splits, so he'll mic up the kit, guitars, everything else, whatever. That all goes into the splits, and then one split goes to the X32, transmitted to us for our mixes, and then the other goes to James, so he can do all the sound out front, mm -hmm. and not affect what we hear. Okay. It's like a separate thing, which is cool. Inside the X32, you have everything like you know, compression, EQ, reverbs, all that. So you really dial in a mix around the kit, the guitars, vocals, everything, so it sounds nice and mixed. You yeah, know? Sure. One of the things that that I've discovered recently, which is really good for in ears, is the we have this little Yamaha EAD thing, mm -hmm. which yeah, it is, is insane. Right, it's so good because it yeah <laughs> retriggers your drums and gives you like a room sound, which for your in ears suddenly makes the whole thing sound like a mixed record. Yeah. Which for me personally, live, like I used to hate wearing earplugs or like in ears, so like. I would just listen to the raw kit and it would be ringing my ears after it's like so having it sound that pristine is, is great I generally just try to have a mix that's like like a record yeah so you can hear everything and pick it out um, the first time for me starting using in-ears was with this band and uh, it definitely takes a lot of pushing out of your vocals especially for me being used to scream over 
small PAs on stage, like singing metal stuff. So that's definitely been a lifesaver. But there's downsides also, like sometimes you feel like you're locked, locked in with those in your ears. You can't hear the audience. It's gonna be like, hey, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. And like everyone else said, like, did you hear them? Like <laughs> they screamed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you go about your like in-ear mix for drums? Lots of kick drum. And someone else listens to my mix, they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, way too much kick drum for my health. But it's, uh, that's, why, that's the way I like it. <laughs> for myself, I like to have uh, like the click track as almost as loud as I can. Yeah, so. and, and it's always, always ruined by the, the damn cowbell. It's a cowbell <laughs> sounding click yeah, on our yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. so when we're playing songs that are not on the click track, it just feels weird because there's no cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys uh, program any like cues into your backing tracks? Leo does most of the backing tracks, but I think it's pre-recorded stuff like, you know, acoustic yeah. guitars and yeah, it can sound be effects. Yeah. Percussion. Anything, and, uh, maybe some extra harmonies here and there or it's the stuff that's in the song, isn't it? The layers that you record. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, the banjo. Uh, the banjo. No, the banjo. <laughs> the, ban <laughs> the banjo's always live. Yeah. Always live. Yeah. Banjo. And we have like some, if there's some snare hits, there's extra like, yeah, sound. sound effects. And so our, our sound guy thinks he does a really good job, but it's like, that's a sample, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What was your approach in terms of moving your stuff from like, you know, like like a recorded kind of environment to to starting to play live? Was there like a particular inspiration for that, or, do, or do, have you like changed anything? I mean, it, it sounds a bit like you're trying to make it as true to the, the recordings as possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I had given up on the whole uh, touring rock star dream that I had earlier, but then like. I knew the right people because the most important thing if you're going to travel with someone is that they're cool people. And especially when I got to know Rabia also, like this guy is uh, a nice guy and also a very good guitarist. <laughs> and I knew like I had like this uh, big fan base kind of world worldwide. So I thought, wow, who doesn't want to like play? cool shows and be a rock star for a few days and then go home and live your life again. Nice. I feel as soon as we started with this band, because of the YouTube channel was so highly viewed or fan based and we started at, at this level, like we didn't sure. start here, yeah, yeah. so it was pretty intense and it definitely opened a lot of doors and uh, yeah, it's definitely just fun. I just want to have fun. That, I guess, is like the principle that's almost at the heart of this, is just making sure you have fun. And, it, and that's, that can be a very easy thing to forget, I think, you know, especially when you start getting bogged down in, in the industry side of things. It's, it, you know, it's important to remind yourself that at the end of the day, it's about playing music and, and enjoying yourself and yeah. having fun. And, and yeah, you have to do all the other stuff as well, but you need to have that authenticity. It needs to be clear that you're enjoying what you're doing for audiences to, like, you know, to connect, even if it, you know, be it live, be it watching videos, like they have to be able to see that you are authentic and enjoying yourself. A lot of feedback that I get on my channel also, people can see that I'm, uh, I'm having fun yeah. doing it. For me, it, it definitely isn't like an uh, economically uh, question about it for live either. I, I could make more money just staying home and doing YouTube. Uh, it's just a motivation to, mm -hmm. to do and I think uh, most musicians are like that we do it because we it's something in us that uh, want to do it. it. It isn't about the money. I just want to extend uh, a huge thank you from Waterbear and everyone here for coming down, making time for this, answering the students' questions. Big thank you to you, you guys uh, for coming down and uh, let's make some noise, I think. Woo!